Hey Photo Tribe, welcome back to the vlog. So once again, it's tea time. Today I wanna to talk to you guys about cameras and sensor selection and which one works best for your specific needs. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions about the Fujifilm GFX, the 50R that I've been talking about. And I've said that I was really excited about it coming out, a medium format rangefinder camera that's going to be sub $4,000 or thereabouts. Very, very reasonable, very cheap for what you're getting. And people said, well, why do you even care about medium format? Full frame should be good enough, right? Well, it kind of is. But remember, there's no perfect camera for every single task, right? But there's perfect cameras for specific tasks. <laughs> we don't want to hammer a nail in with a wrench, <laughs> okay? We want to use a hammer. Anyway, so let me start out by saying, before I even get into it, some people don't know what medium format is or what the actual physical size is. They've heard about it, but they can't see it. They don't know what it looks like. So I pulled out a piece of film. All right, guys, this is a medium. I'm going to see if I can get in there. I don't know. I got horrible glare. Anyways, this is a medium format film, piece of film right here, right? Now, I want to show you the difference between a 35 millimeter Piece. This is 35 millimeter. This is medium format. This is a six by nine. So look at this 35 millimeter once, twice, about two and a half times as wide and about one and three quarters, almost two times as tall. Now bear this in mind also. This is a six by nine. A six by nine is 60 millimeters by 90 millimeters. 60 millimeters high, 90 wide. Most medium format digital cameras are approximately 33 millimeters by 44 millimeters. I don't care if you're looking at Hasselblad, at the GFX on the Fuji side, a Pentax, a Phase One, whatever. Most of them will be 33 by 44. That is half the size of a film medium format. That being said, it's still absolutely amazing. Now, film though has so much more data and that's why companies like Martha Stewart still use it. For all of Martha Stewart's magazines, all those product shots, all of those um, food photography that goes on, all of that stuff is all done with medium format film cameras and then that film is developed and then wet drummed in to the computer, okay? So they have a ton of data to work with. Basically, the proof is in the pudding, right? And I wanna show you some pudding today because a lot of people, they don't understand things or they, don't, they can't see it in their mind's eye. They have to actually see it physically. And I'm gonna show you some medium format comparison to the full frame. Now, about four or five years ago, I was commissioned by a fashion designer to shoot his new spring line that was coming out. So I said, this is awesome. This is what we do. Let's do it. So I select Burn Notice, the TV program, the set of Burn Notice to have our shoot done, as well as a private island right off Miami Beach. So this was going to be a day that was just going to be like no other. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It was in winter because we're shooting for spring. It was winter. It was about 30 degrees on Miami Beach with four models, an MUA, a hairstylist. The whole crew was there. Fun times. Prior to that, I said, you know what? Let me try killing two birds with one stone. I contacted Hasselblad and I said, listen, most photographers feel that medium format is only for studio work. Mount the camera onto a tripod, okay, and shoot product shots or maybe shoot a model or, you know, do portrait work and that's it. And I said, I want to show that we can take your camera. At the time, it was an H4 D40, I believe. Take your camera and run and gun it. So Hasselblad said, you know what? That is a really good idea. They sent me down just about $60,000 worth of gear. It was three lenses as well as that body. The body was like $35,000 alone. They sent it down and that is what we used to go and do this shoot. Now this shoot was also backed up with 5Ds at the time. We did that just in case there was a problem, but I think it was a 5D Mark II, Mark III, something like that, a 26 plus megapixel camera. Okay, we did that for backup, but I wanted to be able to use that also to be able to compare the medium format images with the full frame images just to get an idea. Right? This is always nice, like I said, to take a look at that pudding. So 
we did it. I'm going to roll some footage here. This is probably like 720p. It doesn't look good. Like I said, it's from the archives. But this is the ad. It's only a minute long. Watch this. This is the video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was just a little bit of footage of us actually doing the shoot on that private island. It was just so much fun. It was beautiful, absolutely stellar. Stellar is the word for it. Now, I wanna show you Lightroom here. I'm gonna bring this up and hopefully you can see this pretty well. So here you can see on the left-hand side, we have the Hasselblad image and on the right-hand side, we have the 5D image. Is there a big difference? Not really. You can see it's a little bit wider for the Hasselblad in comparison to the 5D, but that's really about it. If we were to print this 4x6, 5x7, 8x10, you're not gonna see that much of a difference. But like I said, we wanna see some of this proof. We wanna see some of this pudding. So if we now zoom in 25%, we can see that the model is definitely getting bigger on the Hasselblad side. Now, if we move it to 50%, we can see there is a big difference in size and the amount of data. Now, bear in mind, we're at about 15 feet away from this model. Let me back out once again. We're at 15 feet away. So let's zoom back into 50%. We can see that her face is very clear here. Over here, we're getting a little bit more blur. There's not as much detail. But if we go one-to-one, -one, this is a one-to-one, 100%. -one, on the Hasselblad side, we can see the pores on her face. We can still see some eyelashes. On the other side, on the 5D, it's all gone. There's no lip definition, there's no eyelashes. We cannot see any of the blemishes. We can't see any freckling, anything. This is a little bit of the pudding on what you get out of medium format in comparison to full frame, for example. There's a lot more data. I always say that if you need to push a lot of pixels, medium format is the way to go because you have a lot more pixels to play with and they look absolutely amazing. When you shoot medium format, it's very hard to go back to full frame. It just simply is. But if you're shooting full frame and you compare it to APS-C, the difference is marginal, let's say. There's not a big, big difference in comparison when you go from medium format to full frame. So the question is, is, what camera do you select for certain jobs? Now, in my personal opinion, if you go with like an APS-C or a Micro Four Thirds, you're really going for something that's more affordable, it's cheaper, let's say, more consumer, it's lighter, it's usually smaller, and you get an extended reach on your lenses. So for example, if I was to shoot an APS-C camera, and I threw on my big mega 300 millimeter F4 here, right? I end up with about 480, just under 500 millimeters on my APS-C sensor camera. So if I'm going to do bird watching or if I'm gonna do some wildlife stuff, that might be good in comparison to bringing my full frame camera with me, especially if there's a lot of light. More light with the APS-C is good. So now if you select full frame over APS-C, it's probably because you're probably in worse lighting conditions. Maybe you're looking for a larger camera. It is going to be a little bit more expensive. The glass is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but maybe you need to isolate your subject. Maybe your bokeh needs to be a little bit more soft 
behind your subject. For me, I use full frame when I shoot high-end event work. Why? Because there's sometimes four or 500 people in a room for a gala, and I want to isolate someone. So shooting at F4 on a full frame, everybody behind them just turns into beautiful mush. <laughs> and that's what we want. We want to isolate those subjects. So I'll shoot full frame. And that is good. You're going to pay more, but that's what you would use it for. Now, Medium format, why would you use medium format? Like we were saying with the pudding here, the proofs in the pudding, it's for the details to really be able to get in there. When you think you cannot resolve any more detail, you click one more time and you're in deeper. And you're like, wow. And you click again and you're in deeper <laughs> even then. And you keep getting deeper and deeper into the image. It's just amazing how much data is on a medium format shot. So I would shoot product shots. Fashion, any type of fashion. High-end portraiture, fantastic for medium format. But the pricing is very expensive and you need a lot of light. For most medium format cameras, they only go up to about 1200 ISO. Only recently we're seeing medium format cameras like the GFX and some of the Hasselblads that will take you all the way up to 12,800 ISO. That's it. That's maximum, guys. Not this... 51,000 or 200,000 ISO, you're not going to do it. Most medium formats are at like 1,200. If you get to 12,000, you're doing really well and you're paying a lot. For a Hasselblad, for example, that will shoot up to 12,800 ISO, you're looking at probably like a Hasselblad 400C, let's call it. You're looking at $50,000, guys, $50,000. Now, this is why I've said Fujifilm is so great. Because instead of $50,000, you can get the same size sensor, close, same size sensor with the GFX for $6,000. $50,000, $6,000, $50,000, $6,000. That is why I'm so excited about seeing this under $4,000 or $4,000 GFX medium format camera. That will absolutely be a game changer as to who can be a fashion photographer, a product photographer, a high-end portrait photographer, whereas you no longer have to rent in the gear, you could literally own it at those prices, right? So, like I said, Hasselblad, 50,000. GFX, now we're seeing probably about 4,000, maybe 4,500. So guys, once again, like I always say, there is no perfect camera that does everything. But there is perfect cameras for specific things. And if you know exactly what you're going to shoot or what you want to shoot, you can select the camera that works best for your needs. Anyways, guys, as always, I hope you enjoy my content. If you have, please throw me a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. I hope you enjoyed story time. <laughs> Take care.